here with my very first design team package that I wanted to share with you and then we're going to get into the video and we're going to make my first design team project. I am so excited to be with Country Craft Creations. I am so ex I just I just I just can't tell you how excited I am. This is really cool. Um, I got a wonderful package that we're going to work on. Um, it's called Let's Travel and it's by Cartabella and the papers are just really super cool. I just got back from a vacation and so this paper pack was absolutely perfect for what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna just real quick go through what I got in my design team package and show you what I got to work with. So these papers are awesome because they have everything all over the world. Um, this paper in particular is like, it's my, I think it's my favorite one in this whole entire pack. It has everything in it. And the passport paper on the back is super cute. I mean, look at this. The colors are just really, really pretty and amazing. Look at the airplanes. They're just super cute. I love that they, they look to me like they're hand drawn. I just think it's really pretty. And this paper um, has all kinds of little sayings. Go see, do, tra day traveler, let's go, let's lose ourselves. All kinds of little different travel um, type sayings on it. So that's really cute. Here looks like uh, Polaroid pictures and it has everything from, you know, Seattle to India, New York, Florida, Italy, everything. Just super cute. I love the colors and the flamingos. How can you not like flamingos, right? So great cut aparts to play with. And that is beautiful too. I love the flowers. The travel tags. You got to have travel tags if you're going to do a travel album, right? <laughs> and then you have your uh, your uh, flight uh, information. <laughs> I just totally lost my train of thought on that one. So very cute paper. Um, sunglasses here. Super sweet. And the pretty pink paper. That's going to be a nice paper for backgrounds. Here we have stamps from all over the world and all kinds of things from I love you, taking it easy to places, London, India, Egypt. So super cute. And on the back, scooters. Super sweet. You have to have luggage when you travel, so that is so cute. And again, hand-drawn looking design. I just love the way that is. Pineapples. Have to have pineapples. Buses and cars and oh my goodness. Super sweet. Nice red, um, it's checkered kind of background paper. And then another page of cut aparts. That's super sweet. Love it. This one's super cute too. All the people swimming. Whoop. <laughs> All the people in the water. Reminds me of being in Hawaii with my BFF Jackie. Yep. And the stickers that go with the collection. So there's all kinds of stickers that I'm going to get to play with too. And then in the package, I also got this beautiful seam binding in dark blue and a light blue and a really pretty pink that goes perfectly with the paper collection. So I'm going to get to play with all of that. And then this paper collection also came with all of these ephemera pieces. So there's all kinds of real pretty things in this pack to play with. So let me kind of spread that out. You can kind of see. This is a really awesome pack, and it is available, again, at Country Craft Creations. So if you have a trip coming up, if you have a trip that you've already done and you need to document it, this is a perfect pack to get it. And then, last but not least in my pack, um, I got enamel dots that I'm going to get to use. And then I also got some chipboards so I can start working on our project. So next video, we are going to start making a project. Oh, I was going to tell you too. Um, I also bought a package of the denim artisan craft stock to go with all of this. So that's the paper, the cardstock that I'm going to be using to go with this. And I think it's going to match super perfectly with these colors. All right. 
So next time we come back, we're going to start working on a project. Thanks for watching. Hi, everybody. We're back, and we're going to start working on the cover for the album. And I have written down all of the measurements for the chipboard that you need, so you can uh, look in the description for this video and see that um, but I'll go ahead and give them to you while you know we're working so for the cover my my book uh, covers are going to measure uh, six inches wide by eight inches tall so you'll need two of those and then the spine is two and a half inches by eight inches tall and then the paper that you're going to need you're going to need um, a couple pieces of the artisan cardstock here and where the heck did my notes go? Okay, here where they go. So you're going to need one piece that's 12 by 10, and you're going to need one piece that's 5 and a quarter by 10. And then what we're going to do first is we're going to attach these two pieces together. I already put on a quarter inch strip of score tape down the side. And then you're going to want to line it up with something that has a nice straight edge. And lucky for me, this table that I'm using has an edge on the bottom, so I'm just going to put that flush and line these two pieces up and put it down. Okay, this will give you, these measurements on this cardstock will give you um, an inch all the way around your album. Okay, so once you have these two pieces attached, then that's all you need to worry about is having an inch all the way around. I went ahead and put score tape on the back of my chipboard pieces. Um, important to cover the whole entire thing with the score tape because that helps when you are opening and closing the book so that the pages don't buckle. It's all really nice and adhered, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and stick that down. And this one, I didn't cut the sheet of the score tape the right way, so I had to add a little strip of it. Um, so anyways, so I'm just going to get my ruler. I'm going to line it up on this side and put down my first cover. So I just want to make sure that I've got my ruler lined up so that I know where the inch marks are. And then I'm just going to go ahead and lay that first part down. Just like that. And then you're going to want to grab your score tape again. And we're going to want to put a quarter inch piece of score tape in between your spines. I know you, you guys have probably already seen this before. We're going to do it again. So we're going to do that. There is one little thing I'm going to show you that I do that has worked really well for me, and you can try it if you like. Um, if you don't like it, that's cool too. It's just like I tell everybody at my job. There's, you know, a thousand ways to to do this, and you have to pick what works best for you. So then, once you get that down, you're gonna go ahead and do it again on the other side. And I tend to really use my fingernail for this. I probably should use my bone folder, but you know, again, what works best for you. <laughs> so then, this'll make it, so the seam's gonna be in the middle of the back cover so that'll be fine and again you know we're going to cover everything with paper so the seam isn't going to be an issue okay just like that all right so then i'm just gonna burnish that down make sure that it sticks really good okay now this is what I do when I'm covering my books. So I learned a long time ago that you take your bone folder and you score here. And then that helps, you know, bend the cardstock over your chipboard and helps reduce the risk of tearing, which with this cardstock, very low risk of using or uh, doing if you're using the um, artisan cardstock. But, um, what I found was when you're when you're scoring paper, when you do it, let me see, let me get a little piece here. When you're scoring paper, we're just gonna make a score here. This is this is where this is the fold you want to make because you're you're basically making the paper fibers go 
the way you want them to go. If you, this is the way you want to do it. If you do it the opposite way, you have a tendency to, to rip the paper. Um, and I was thinking to myself, self, um, why are you scoring in the wrong direction? So what I started doing was I turned my piece over and then I, with my finger, you can feel the edge of the cardstock and then real gentle. And I like to use this bone folder because it's not quite as sharp as the other one. But then I just go along the sides, just real gentle. And I'm scoring it in the direction that I actually want it to go. And this has worked super well for me. Um, and it helps when you're going to fold, you know, the paper around the chipboard. Okay, so just real super, super gentle. Real super gentle. Just all the way around the sides. And again, you can feel it with your finger. And just real gentle. Just train the paper to go around the chipboard the way you want it. Okay, so this, this totally, I mean, it was almost like an aha moment when I realized, you know, what the heck am I doing? I'm scoring the paper the wrong way. And with some other papers, if you're using pattern paper um, to cover your chipboards instead of using cardstock and then putting pattern paper on it, sometimes the pattern paper, I've noticed, um, will have a tendency to kind of um, tear a little bit or fray. And, um, you know, that's when we use our real good distressing ink trick to cover that up. But if you don't want to have that happen, score on the opposite side, okay? So now, We've got everything kind of trained the way we want it to go, okay, in the proper direction that we want it to go. So then the next thing that I do when I'm covering my books is I'll take this off here. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and put my score tape on. And so you just put, put your strip on the outer edges, like so. And I'm not going to the edge, completely to the edge on purpose. And I shall show you why. Okay. Like that. So then, you're gonna wanna put another piece of score tape on the inside. Now this one I'm just going to go edge to edge on the cardstock here on both sides. And then where you get to the parts where you have the divots where your um, spine, you know, quarter inch piece is. So I run my fingernail down it, but then I also kind of tease that with my fingernail, you could use a bone folder if you don't have any um, fingernails or, or can't get in there. But um, that also kind of helps because sometimes the score tape, if it's laying straight across, you actually have a gap in between the score tape and the chipboard. I just find this works much easier uh, for me. Um, and it tends to help the cardstock stick in that area a little bit better, I think. So try it, see what you think. Okay, and then you're going to want to make sure that it's all stuck down really well. I used to have this whole elaborate system where I would do just this piece and then this piece and this piece. And then when I realized, you know, just to sacrifice another inch of score tape, it actually was a lot easier to deal with. So there you go. Then the other thing is um, the way that I like to cut my corners, um, I like to cut straight across but I leave a little bit of a gap and you can kind of see, I hope you can see it, the gap where you scored it. You want about an eighth of an inch or so on, um, but uh, beyond, excuse me, the point of your chipboard. So, and you don't have to be super, you know, um, precise about it. You just want a somewhat of a 45 angle and you want about a quarter of an inch between the paper and the chipboard. And you're gonna to want to do that all the way around. And most of the time, I just eyeball it. It's gonna get covered 
it's going to cover everything completely and it's going to be covered up by card uh excuse me pattern paper so you're not gonna to have to worry about it okay and i'm really sorry i am nervous this is my first design team project and I am just, I'm nervous. I just want to do a good job. So <laughs> sorry for the stuttering and all that stuff. I'm trying to be a good girl. Okay, so then my mantra is top, bottom, side, side. So that's how I fold my paper over my chipboard. So I take everything off. And then top bottom so then I just take and I roll it over and stick it down initially on the top and the bottom okay so we have have the top and the bottom kind of stuck down okay and then what I do and this is another fingernail thing I'm a big use of my hands type girl so I just take my thumb and I know um, you've probably seen this technique before, and I just kind of tease the edge in just a little bit. That's where that eighth inch comes in because it covers the edge of the cardstock or the chipboard. And then fold it over. And there you have it. Nice and covered, nice angle, and it's good to go. Okay, so then again, I'm gonna take and I'm going to just tease my fingernail in there. Just fold it in and then fold it over. Get that initial stick and there you have it. So then I'm taking my, this is my favorite bone folder I think, probably because it's the first one I had, but um, I love this one. And then just gently push that down into the quarter inch space on both sides. Nice and gentle. You don't want to rip the paper. You just want to be careful. All right. And then kind of play with it a little bit. Nice and slow. There you go. So we have our first part done. So then we're going to need to cover the spine. So I used um, the extra piece from cutting this piece right here, this five and a quarter inch by 10 inch piece. I just saved the rest of it and that's what's going to cover my spine and then we're going to put pattern paper over this so this will be nice and pretty in blue so i'm going to do that let's take that score tape off all of it because that helps make a stick right and then i'm just going to eyeball it because like i said most of it's going to be covered and i want to make sure that it is in the middle between the top and the bottom, okay? And then just stick that down. So this piece right here was seven and seven eighths by six and three quarters. So again, it was the leftover piece from the cover and then I just trimmed it up to seven and seven eighths, okay? And then I'm just gonna, where's my big one? I like this one, it covers my surface area. All right, and then again, you're gonna wanna tease into the quarter inch spaces, nice and gentle. Okay. Like so. Okay. All right, so then what we're going to do is a couple different things. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to put a waterfall piece on this side and I'm going to want a closure and the way I'm going to do the closure is I'm going to put it underneath the pattern paper so that it's on the edge of the book and then it'll fold over the waterfall and we're going to do a, a magnet closure on this. So I'm going to actually put this down first before I put down the pattern paper, okay? So um, this waterfall closure is, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, I didn't write it down, which of course I didn't. All right, so this is four and an eighth by two 
and I scored it at one half inch and one eighth inch, and that gave me an eighth inch gusset so that when the waterfall is filled up, it has a little room to breathe and, um, you know, you can fill it up and it kind of will, it will still work. So anyways, the quarter inch, or excuse me, the half inch side is the side that we're going to glue down. And we're gonna do that. My art glitter glue. And I'm going to just center it. And the center mark is at right there, eight inch album. And you're gonna just do it right to the edge. All right. Just like that. Okay, where's my... All right, so we're gonna do that. Then, that's where we're gonna take this paper and we're going to lay it down right over top of that and that's gonna cover it up really nice. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna real quick trim that just a hair. I did not ink my papers. A lot of times I don't, but when I'm using stuff that looks really vintagey, I love to ink, um, but this paper, for you know whatever reason, screamed clean to me. So I'm not going to ink. But you totally could do that if you wanted to. All right. And then we're going to just center that there. All right, and these um, pattern papers, these pattern papers to fit the inside, I cut them an eighth of an inch smaller than the covers. So the covers are six by eight. So these are five and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. All right, so then my plan for the back page of the album is to put the waterfall here and then this will come over and it will close with a magnet. And then on this cover, I'm planning on doing my never ending mini. And so um, the closure for that's going to be ribbon around the back of it. So, um, or excuse me, not ribbon, my seam binding. And so I can go ahead and cover this one right now. Okay, so we can do that right now. Okay. All right, so there we go. I love this arrival and departure paper. This is super fun. All right, so we have the inside of the album done now. I have a plan for the outside closure of the album that I'm going to do, but I can't put the covers on until I do that. And so what my plan, and, and it's going to be kind of um, hard to work with. So we're going to do that part last. So we're going to take care of the cover last. Okay. So then the next thing I want to do is I want to add my pages and then I'm going to show you another little trick that I like to use for adding pages. I'm gonna do the um, hingeless page and I'll show you a really cool trick for that. So you're gonna, I make, I'm gonna make four pages with this album and these pages are going to measure six and a quarter by seven and a half and we're gonna score at a half an inch for our binding, okay? So get out your handy dandy scoreboard and we're gonna score all of these at half an inch. Now, if I want my pages, so the way that I did this, so the pages in the book are going to be seven and a half tall, and the working space is gonna be five and a half. 
I have actually a little more space. I gave myself a little extra quarter inch space that I'm going to um, have so that it gives a little bit more give in the pages, okay? So just um, when we go through the video and actually put the pieces on the pages, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. But we're not going to put everything completely towards the score of the page. We're gonna have a quarter inch gap in between where the elements end and the binding begins. I hope that makes sense. It will in a minute. So let's just score all of our pages at half an inch. There we go. And then going to go ahead and burnish those really well. I was always taught that the way you, you know, you score this on this side and that's the way you want to fold the paper and then you start in the middle and work your way out the first time you do it um, because that helps to ensure that you have a nice score fold where you want it. And then the other, the other burnishing you can do up and down, sideways, whatever you want. But you start, you know, round about the middle and go towards one end and back to the other. Okay? So then, so we got our pages, all four of those. Then let's grab our cover. So the cover, and I'm going to get a post-it note just to hold that down so it doesn't flop around all over the place. There we go. Okay. Um, so we're going to put... Each page has a half an inch in between it, so half an inch right here, so that's going to give you a half inch gusset, and then there's a half an inch on either side. So I'm going to take my pencil and my ruler, and I'm going to line it up to the edge of the card, or the chipboard, I keep wanting to say cardboard, and put a light pencil mark, make sure that looks about right. I'm trying not to get my head in the camera because you guys don't need to see my gray hair, that's for sure. Let's see, is that about right? Yep, that's about right. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my glue and our first page we're going to lay down just like we always do. Ah! And I'm going to get glue all over everything, that's for sure. Okay, so then I'm just going to turn it to the side and I'm going to line it up and make sure that it is centered top and bottom, okay? So you should have about a quarter inch on each side, top and bottom. So top and bottom, and then you should have half an inch there, okay? All right. Just like that okay then I'm gonna open it up I'm gonna grab my second page and I'm gonna do the same thing the last page is the page that's going to be different okay so and then I kind of find it easier to do it this way Make sure when we open it, it lines up fairly well. And it does. Okay. Perfect. All right. Third page. Same thing. Now, you will notice that I already have a half an inch here, and a lot of people will just stick this down here, which gives you the half an inch space you need, which is great. Um, but you can see this binding piece. 
okay? You notice on the front, you can't see the binding piece because the binding piece is tucked underneath the page, okay? And as you turn, it just looks like it's part of the page. I'm gonna take this one and I'm actually, instead of doing it like that, I'm gonna turn it around and I'm going to adhere this hinge on top of the other hinge. And then that way, it gives a nice folded edge on this particular side of the spine. And it just hides it. And I like that. Um, it works really well. And I have never had any problems with um, pages, you know, having a, a hard time staying adhered. So I'm just gonna put the glue on and I'm gonna put this binding piece right on top of the last binding piece. Just be careful not to go over the score line. You wanna just go right to the score line of the previous page. And then just squish it down. All right, and that is what I like to do with my pages when I'm using a hingeless system, okay? So now you have a nice folded edge here to your page. You do not have, um, you know, a part of your binding showing, just like in the beginning for the first page. And then the awesome thing about the Artisan cardstock is that it's reversible completely, so you can't tell that there's a wrong side um, to it. With a lot of cardstocks, it has a textured side, and then the other side, you know, is is different. You can obviously see a difference. This stuff you don't, so it works out super well using this cardstock. All right, so we're gonna stop here for now. Um, I'm gonna gather some stuff, and then we'll be back for the next part. Okay, we're back now. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're gonna work on our waterfall. So the waterfall is gonna go on the back page and we are going to need a couple pieces of paper here. We're going to need three papers that are five inches wide by six and a half inches tall. And you're going to need three of those and then you're gonna score each of them at half an inch. So the page itself that you'll be able to play with and decorate will be four and a half by six and a half which fit a four by six picture perfectly, okay? So you need three of those, again, scored at the half inch mark for the page, and then I just grabbed a scrap to make the base of it, okay? So then all we're gonna do, we're gonna just do a simple waterfall with this, and we're gonna glue these to our base, and then we're just gonna trim off the excess when we're done. So I'm just gonna put it right to the edge. Right there. And put it down. I'm being kind of messy with my glue. I didn't wanna get it on my little brown desk here. <laughs> All right, so just like that. And Number two. Same thing. Hear that down really well. All right, now this is going to be just like the um, pages in our book. We are going to glue this page down right over top of that hinge. When we trim that off, it's gonna give us a nice edge on both sides, okay? So you won't have like just another hinge because we're gonna put it on top of the pattern paper that we already did, okay? So we're gonna do it backwards um, from what you might think you want to do. And again, just to the score line, don't go over the score line. Okay? Just like that. And then grab your weapon of choice here. 
and just gently trim it without obviously trimming the paper that you just did. There we go. Now if you want to be super exact and actually cut that piece out to fit before so you don't have to trim it, this piece ends up being, it's six and a half long by about a little bit over an inch by the time you add in the score lines and stuff. So, so there you have your, your waterfall, okay? So when it opens, and then like that. So then what we're gonna do is the base of the waterfall here, that's what you're gonna glue onto your page. And you're gonna center it just like that. And then the closure piece will come and go like that. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Just gonna eyeball here. There we go. Okay. And then get in there and really stick it down. Good. Okay, so then there you go. Now you have your waterfall. And then what the cool part is, is now you have, you still get to see the pretty pattern paper underneath. So lots of room for pictures there, okay? This is gonna have a magnet closure and we're gonna put that on a little bit later, I think. Okay, so now, for the front of the book, we talked about my never-ending mini. So let's do that. So for that, you're going to need three pieces of paper and they are going to be, each of them are gonna be 10 inches wide by seven inches tall. And we're going to need to score them all in order to make this book. So, so two of these pieces, you're gonna score at five inches. Okay, and that is on the 10 inch side. So you're gonna score it at five inches on the 10 inch side. So do two of those just like that. All right, then you're gonna take the third piece and you're gonna score three lines. You're gonna score at the five inch on the 10 inch side. And then if you wanna score it the proper way, flip her over and score at four and a half and five and a half to make sure that the lines go in the proper direction, okay? The first one you scored, the five inch side's gonna go like that, but then these pages will end up folding out the opposite direction. So, You're gonna want something that looks like that when you're done with the one piece, okay? The other two pieces, you just score in and fold in half just like always. Just like that, okay? So then, what you're gonna do, in order to put this thing together, it's really kind of a cool thing. You're going to glue the three pieces together, but you're going to glue them together only in this half inch space right there. So these pieces will fold in like that, this piece will go over like that, and then this book will open like this, and then it'll open like this, because those two pieces will be glued inside and then you flip it over, it'll open like this, okay? Now we're gonna glue 
this book down so that the back side will be adhered to the book, we're gonna have seam binding ties to close it. All right, so easiest way is to first line it up. You're gonna stick these edges here into this spot here. Now, it's probably easier for me if I use score tape on this because glue gets a little messy in this because of all the three pieces kind of coming together. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my score tape, whatever the heck I did with it. And here it is. Nope, is that it? Yep, that's it. I hit it for myself really well. So I'm just gonna put some score tape here. On the inside of the half inch scores on that third piece that we did and then um, I'm gonna grab a little bit this is um, I'm using a piece of quarter inch and then I'm using a piece of eighth inch um, since it's a half inch score the half inch score tape seems to like always manage to get into the score lines and stuff and I don't like that so so you're gonna take off one side here and take your paper and you're gonna orient it like this your, your third card is oriented like that, okay? And you're gonna take this guy that's folded like that and you're gonna lay it down right to the score line, just like so. And then you're gonna take your other guy and do the same thing. So make sure the, the mountain is at the top, as they say. And then I'm gonna turn it around because I can't do it left-handed. And I'm gonna lay it down like that on the inside. So now you should have a piece that looks like that. Okay, so these two pieces here are the, the V that we made or the W that we made. We put the two papers on the inside of it. You should have a piece that looks like that and then you just fold it like that, fold it like that, and there you go. So this book, I've made this before where you can you know, stick it in a pocket and use it as a pullout. You can use it as an album on your own, on its own, I should say, um, and then just uh, use a ribbon closure to keep it all contained. What we're gonna do is we're gonna glue the back side of it to the inside of the book after adding our seam binding closures. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna want it so that it opens up like this. So this is gonna be the back here and I'm just gonna put a little bit of score tape on it first to secure my seam binding. And I'm gonna try and line it up. Let's get that out of the way for a sec. Let's see, there we go. Okay. Just like that. Okay, so then all we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our book and we're gonna glue it in. And then you'll see how cool this comes out. It's really a neat addition to albums. I've used this a lot. Okay. Make sure my orientation is the way I want it. Yep, oh, upside down. There we go. Okay. And then I'm just going to put it down like so.
I'm going to open the book up to the back page here, and I'm just going to make sure that I get it down really well. Okay. All right. So then when you close it up, so we'll have our seam binding ribbon closure. Okay. So it'll be nice and contained. And then when you want to look at it, so you have your front page and it opens like that. And then like that, close it. It opens like this. And then like that, close it. And then it opens again to the middle. Isn't that cool? I love this book. I love this um, thing. It is. It, it just is a cute way to add a ton of extra pictures to your album. Um, and then just FYI, I cut my seam binding at about a foot. That gave me plenty to put behind the album and then tie. And then, of course, I'm going to finish the edges there. But anyways, that is, that is the Never Ending Mini Album. And then that is the waterfall that I put in the back of the book that will give you six more spots and room here for more pictures. Alrighty, so next thing is some uh, elements for the inside of the book. So I will be back in just a minute. Alrighty, now we're gonna start working on the inside of our album. And um, I have a couple elements that I put in the album that there's only two repeats. Everything else is going to be the um, same or everything else is going to be different. <laughs> Getting myself tongue tied. Um, so the two repeats are going to be on the front sides of the pages. Um, one is a nice magnet closure expandable envelope. If you can see that to put things in. I figured if it's a travel album, you're going to want to keep tickets, maybe some brochures, you know, handouts, flyers, whatever. So um, I thought that that would be a good thing. So we're going to put this on pages one and page three. And then um, I thought this was kind of a cute idea. So um, I made a folio on the front of page two and it's going to go on the front of page four as well. So they'll alternate envelope folio, envelope folio. Um, so when you open it up, then you have a place where you can put even more um, things brochures, whatever, but it'll keep it nice and secure. You could also use it and just put pictures in it if you wanted to, but it would also be a, a nice place to, um, to put some, you know, bits of, uh, things that you've collected on your, on your journey. Um, you could also put just, uh, pictures in there, just, just put the pictures in there and then you can open it up and then, you know, just pick them out and sort through them. So, um, and that'll be tied with a seam binding closure. So let's get started with how to make those things. So we're going to put an envelope on page three and we're going to put the folio on page four. So again, envelopes are going to go on, on the fronts of pages one and page three. And then the folio is going to go on the fronts of page two and page four. So let's start with the envelope. This is an expanding envelope. So we're going to have to do a little bit of scoring and cutting. So you're going to need a piece of paper that's eight and a half by five and three quarters. So eight and a half by five and three quarters. And we're going to do some scoring. So we're going to score this at a half, one and one and a half. And then we're going to score at seven, seven and a half and eight. Okay. So again, we're going to score at half, one, one and a half and then seven, seven and a half, and eight. That's gonna give you a five and a half inch wide pocket. Then we're gonna turn this guy over and only need one score here at five and a quarter. All right, so that gives you, these outside scores are what we're gonna to adhere to the book, okay, with a half inch. Then you're gonna need an envelope top, and this guy is going to measure three and a half by five and a half. And you only need one score on this one. We're going to score it at three. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our scissors first. We're going to make some cuts. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to miter the top flap. 
And then, if I can find what I did with my corner rounder, here it is. We're gonna round the corners of the flap. Okay, then we'll fold, burnish, and that piece is ready to go. Okay, then we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna need to do some scoring and cutting. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna miter these corners, and I kind of mitered them pretty sharply because we have three different layers that we're gonna go through. Okay, so they're pretty sharply mitered. And then down here at the bottom, I did just a little bit of a mitering. These are the sides, bottom, just a little bit of a miter. Okay, just like that. Get rid of those pieces. And then, got some folding to do, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and then we'll do the accordion fold and just go ahead and get all those at the same time, like so. All right. All right. I'm going to nudge that in just a little bit. Make it line up a little bit better. Um, and then what we're going to do is take a little bit of our, our glitter glue. We're going to fold those accordions in. Put a little bit of glue there. Fold the bottom up. And then hold it down for a hot second here. Let that glue catch. So that's going to create the bottom of the pocket. And then the top part will have some expansion to it. Okay? So you should have a piece that looks like that and glued at the bottom, okay? All right, so let's grab our book and on the front of page three, we're on page three now, this five and a half inch pocket is going to go flush with the outer edge of your book and the bottom of the book. Now remember at the very beginning where I talked about I'm gonna have this half, or excuse me, a quarter inch kind of leeway area so here's our, here's our binding piece, which is a half an inch, and then we had our pages cut. They're going to be a quarter of an inch longer than what you really need. And we want that so that the pages will lay flat and will allow for all of these different elements that we're putting in, and they won't get tied up into the binding, and they won't get squished and bent when you move your book. Okay, so you don't want to put it near the score, that you do not want to do that. You want to put it towards the edge of the page. Let me get, let me see if I can find a white piece of paper, super handy. Let me see, this will work probably. So you can see it a little bit better, okay? So you want it right on that edge, okay? So, grab our glue again and you're going to put glue on these pieces. And then we turn our book around and actually let's get that white paper so you can just kind of see better what I'm doing. Orient it the correct way. All right. So, just line it up at the edge, on the bottom and the side, and press down. Okay, so we have our quarter of an inch give right there, in addition to our binding. And now we have a nice hinged pocket. And then I'm going to turn my book around, and this piece here, our little uh, flap for it, our closure flap, Super simple, but it creates a nice place where you can put lots of things, especially for a travel album when you have lots of um, memorabilia and souvenirs and ticket stubs and all that kind of stuff. 
All right. And then just line that up over top. Easy peasy. All right. So that's that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a couple of magnets. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we'll grab some magnets. These things, I love them. I use two small magnets per envelope. You could use one large one if you wanted to. You can use it in any kind of closure you wanted to. Um, but I use two small ones. And I'm just going to put one there. And if I can get the paper off, we'll be golden. One, oops, little one there. There. But then pop it down. And then hopefully, yep, that worked perfect. All right, boom, envelope done. Okay, so now we have an envelope on page one, folio page two, envelope page three, and we're gonna put a folio on page four. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you want that quarter inch leeway, so you're gonna need to measure from that score line of the page to a quarter of an inch and draw yourself a pencil mark. Okay, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, do not put it towards the score. You need that quarter inch mark, okay? So then we're gonna grab our pieces here. You're gonna need a couple of them. So we're gonna need two pieces for the sides that measure four by seven and a half and you're gonna to wanna to score at a half. You're gonna to wanna to miter your corner. And then um, I used a corner rounder. Whoop. There we go. And rounded the corners on that one. So again, it was four inches by seven and a half scored at a half, miter your corners, and round your corners, okay? So those are your two sides. You need two of those. And then you need the top flaps. So you need a piece that's three, two pieces that are three by five. And you're gonna score these guys at a half. And the same process, miter your corners, And then corner rounder. Okay. Then a little folding and burnishing like always. Okay, so we got all our four pieces here. All right, so then the next thing we're gonna do is we need to get some seam binding for the closures. And again, about a foot for each piece is what tends to work best for me. So let me cut that really quick. I'm going to use the light blue, so I'm going to use a little bit of every color that um, I was given, so that'll be cool. Uh, then, grab our ruler just so we can center it pretty nicely. And in the center of the page, I'm going to add a little score tape so that we can, whoop, so we can attach our seam binding. It's going to be glued down too with the pages, so it's going to be kind of double stuck. 
And then I'm looking at the pencil line here. And I don't know if you can hear it in the background. Very, very, very quietly in the living room. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is on. And that is like my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Out of all the movies I love, and I love lots of movies, that one is my absolute favorite. And even if I'm not watching it, because I'm doing other things, I just have to, if it's on, it's on the TV. I don't know how many of you guys are <laughs> like that too. Okay, so got my seam binding attached and then I'm gonna start on this side. Well, you start on either side, it doesn't really matter. But I'm gonna add glue to my side flaps. Put the side flaps on first. Makes it a lot easier to put the top flaps on and you'll see why in just a second. And then we'll just line those up, the edge of the page on the outside there. I think I should get that white page back so you guys could see better. Okay, so I got that. And then I'm gonna flip my book over and then I'm going to put the other side flap on and it's going to be on that pencil mark that we made that will still give us that quarter inch leeway. Makes your pages turn better, that's for sure. Doesn't get your elements all caught up in the, in the uh, score of the binding, which is very nice, because that makes me crazy when that happens. <laughs> oh, one more corner rounding I forgot. Hold on. Boom, boom. Corner round. All right. So then the pieces here, the top and the bottom flap, uh, they're not as wide as this page area. And I did that on purpose so that, again, these will fold over them very nicely and they won't get caught up and messed up. So then I just eyeballed them on the bottom. There's about a quarter of an inch on either side. And then just burnish that down. And then do it again. All right. All right. So there's that. There's that about a quarter of an inch there we go all right so we have our second folio completed so these will fold in like that and like that it's going to all get covered with beautiful pattern paper from this collection got our seam binding to close it and voila all right, so we have our inside cover, our never-ending mini, our waterfall, and then we've got pocket, folio, pocket, folio done. So now we just have to do the back pages. These, all four of these are going to be different. So it's going to be kind of fun. We're going to have some great elements in this paper. So um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to uh, get some stuff ready and we will be back soon with more. Okay, we're back, and what we're going to do now is on the back side of page one, we're going to put a flap with pockets. So for that, you are going to need a piece of paper that is eight and an eighth inch wide by 10 long, okay? So eight and an eighth inch by 10. And we're going to do some scoring. So we're going to score on the eight inch side, or eight and an eighth inch side, pardon me, at one half and five eighths. So that gives you an eighth of an inch gusset. And then we're going to score at five and five eighths all the way down. Then we're going to turn our paper and we're going to score at half an inch and at seven and a half inches okay so let's go through that again on the eighth and an eighth inch side we're going to score at half an inch at five eighths of an inch 
at five and five eighths of an inch. And we're going to turn it and we're going to score at half an inch and at seven and a half. Okay, so we're going to do some cutting because we have to. Let me get rid of this for now. Um, we have to make some pockets and we're going to make some tabs to make the pockets with. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to miter this corner and on the bottom part there's these two scores we're going to go with the second score so we're going to miter it all the way down to the 5 8 inch score line okay on the top part the seven and a half inch long piece we're going to miter only to the first score line to the half inch and then we'll go ahead and cut that little triangle out. And then we're going to miter that. But we're going to keep that flush because we want the eighth inch gusset on the top. We don't really care about it on the bottom, but this is going to end up being part of the pocket, so we don't care. So then we're going to do the same here. And we're going to cut straight up. Okay. And then we're going to cut clear across that top score line because we really don't need that top piece. And then this top half inch line here is going to end up being part of the pocket assembly. Okay, so so far we've got the tab for this skinny piece here. This is all cut off. This is mitered. We left our eighth of an inch intact all the way down. Okay, we mitered this binding and then this we mitered all the way up to the 5 8 inch mark because that's going to be part of our pocket assembly okay so now we've got to deal with this corner so what we're going to do is we're going to end up we're going to make tabs out of this by simply mitering up and going to about the half inch mark and then we're going to go from the score line we're going to miter down and cut that chunk out and then we're just going to go corner to the score line corner. Okay, and that's going to give us our pockets. So one pocket on one side, one pocket on the other side. And we got to do some folding. So first off, we're going to score, or we're going to fold, excuse me our side markings and we're going to preserve that eighth inch gusset. Now that gets a little tricky when you have little ones like that, but we can do it. You just have to be gentle. Okay, so there you go. So now we have our nice little one eighth inch gusset and we have our half inch tab that we're going to use to put the page on the book. Okay, so then the bottom pocket folds to the front the side pocket folds to the back. So, we're gonna fold those tabs in and then fold this guy up and make sure it's nice and lined up. And just do that. So those are gonna get glued down and that's gonna make a nice pocket. And then the rest of the tabs go to the back side. And the cool thing about this paper, this artisan cardstock, is that it is it is awesome paper. You can actually score it and fold it any way you want, really. If you're using brand X, you can't really do that. So um, you would have to turn the paper over and score to you know go the correct direction. But on this one, you don't have to. So we've got our binding piece, we've got our front pocket, and then when we turn the page over. Now we're going to have a pocket like this. So we just have to glue those pieces into place. Like so. Okay, I'm just going to fold up. Make sure that's glued nice. And then we're going to turn her over. And we're going to do this. Now, if you wanted to do this like super simple and not worry about all these tabs, you totally could do that and just glue the sides together. 
but I like to have the full real estate of pockets and such, so I tend to make tabs to do that. Um, and I like to I'm, I like to make paper paper engineering, I guess. I like to do that. So it's fun for me to kind of think about how to take a piece of paper and with a few cuts and folds make it into pockets and things. So anyway, so we've got our pocket done. So now let's get our book. This is going to go back on the back of page one. So we're going to flip this over and what it's going to do is it's going to sit on the edge and it's going to open like so. So we're just going to, I'm going to turn it to the side so I can see what I'm doing really nicely. And I'm going to add some glue. Like so. Oh, my little doxy is in here watching mama. All right. And then I'm just going to make sure that I don't glue the gusset down and I'm going to eyeball it. It's going to be about a quarter of an inch on top and bottom. Smaller, you know, it's a smaller page than the one we're gluing it to. So it'll be It'll be fun because then you'll be able to see pattern paper underneath it. He's wondering who I'm talking to because he knows I'm the only one in the room right now. <laughs> okay, so we've got that book or got that page. So envelope on the front of page one and then we got our pocket and then I'm going to grab my handy dandy large magnets and I'm going to put a large magnet for closure on this page. So I'm just going to stick it roughly in the middle of that pocket flap and then make sure that I preserve my gusset because I don't want to compromise that after I spent all that time making it. There we go. All right, back of page one. So next, back of page two. Back of page two is going to be a simple gatefold. So you're going to need two pieces of paper for this, and they measure three and three quarters by seven and a half, and you're just going to take and you're going to score them at the half inch, okay? This, this is pretty simple, and you need two of those, so three and three quarters by seven and a half, and then we're going to want to miter our corners, and which I probably could have taken care of already. All right, miter our corners and fold and burnish. You can round the corners if you want to, but I'm gonna leave them square this time because I feel like it. So on the back of this book, now this is one where we're going to have to do some measuring and pencil marking because, where'd my pencil go? We don't want to go over that quarter inch uh, spot. And you know, I prefer this ruler for that because I can see through it better. Okay, so I'm going to line it up. I'm just going to draw a pencil line so I know not to go over that line. And then I'm going to put the gatefold on. And then I'm thinking I'm going to do a little tab type closure on this one. So I'm not going to do anything to it right now because it's going to involve the pattern paper to hide my brad. So I will show you that later when I get it done. Okay, so we have our preserved our quarter inch here and then we're just going to take and put the other side of the gatefold on here okay and I, I measured the this so that when we open this when you have a favorite piece of paper that you like you can preserve the whole design of it so we're only going to cut like a wee section off what did I just do oh my god oh 
Oh my god, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> That's what I get for talking. All right, so we're going to re-glue this on there. Scratch that and reverse it. Okay, that was not good. All right, good gravy. All right. All right, let's glue it to the proper side. Good Lord. All right, so there's your gatefold. Ta-da, I am going to fix that. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, so there's your gatefold. So this will actually be almost, I think it is actually 12 inches. It is actually measures out to 12 inches wide. So when I cut my pattern paper to make the little borders and stuff, we're only gonna lose just a little, little teeny tiny bit of it. Um, but we'll have the whole 12 inch spread that we can put on this. And then I'm going to do a really fun closure with that. Um, so that's the back of page two. So the back of page three is super simple. <laughs> I think. Um, I wanted to do a really kind of a cool diagonal pocket. So we're going to need a big piece of paper and we are going to use an 11 and a half inch piece by seven and a half inch and then score it down at the half inch mark. I'm calling this, this is a, like a double diagonal pocket. This is really kind of a cool thing. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our pocket and we're going to grab our cutter and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold and burnish that that line okay and then because what we're going to do is we're going to make we're going to make a um, cut let me make sure I remembered my plans here okay so fold is here we're gonna go from the score point here all the way to the score point here. And I don't remember, yep, it doesn't fit. So what we're gonna have to do, hang tight for just a second. I'm gonna pause this, no, I'm not. I need to do this. There we go. All right, and then I'm gonna grab a different ruler though because it's longer. Okay, so score line here. Go ahead and fold that. And you want to fold it because you want to incorporate part of that to miter the corner, okay? And you're going to grab your weapon of choice here, and you're going to just go from corner to corner. All right. And do a diagonal cut. All right like that cut that little piece off okay so now that binding will hide in the pocket so that's why we wanted to incorporate that into the cut and then we're gonna go back and rescore this piece I didn't want to score it first because then it would ruin the integrity of this piece in case you needed a longer strip so we're gonna save that for later okay so then let's go back to the scoreboard and we're gonna put this guy in here and we're gonna measure. So now it is, um, we've got this paper here and the score line will end up being at 11 inches right here, okay? So then you're gonna to wanna to do half of 11 inches, which would be five and a half, okay? And make a score, okay? And then in order, we can be, we can be totally, Correct and do both sides. Anyway, let's go back to here. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to adhere this to the back of the page. We're going to fold this guy over, making sure that it doesn't go over the um, score. We're going to fold that over. We're going to take a little bit of glue. Let's glue this guy down here real quick. Just one little line of glue. Okay, so that creates 
the diagonal pocket here, okay? All right, then let's take our book. That's the back of page three. And on the edge here, we're going to put our glue on our flap. And we're going to line it up on the edge. All right. And glue it down. Okay. And then we're going to glue it again. So we're going to take some on the bottom here. And some right here. And we're going to glue it down. And then I'm going to show you how to cut the pattern paper to fit this absolutely perfectly. So now what you end up having is two diagonal pockets. You have one here and then you have one here. Okay? So that's our double diagonal pocket. Pretty simple to do. Okay, now back of page four, my idea is a simple belly band. We all know how to do belly bands. So I got a piece that's two by eight and a half and I scored it at half an inch on each end. And burnish that, burnish that. Then you don't need to minor the corners because we're gonna go ahead and just cover that with pattern paper, that's my idea. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it. It's better to miter when you're at corners and things like that because it hides it better, but this one's gonna be hidden because it's in the middle of the book. So you don't really need to miter it if you don't want to. But you can if you want. So then I'm just gonna look for the center point here My book's getting a little thick. All right, so about there-ish. Yeah. Okay. Put it down. Like that. Okay. So we have our belly band pocket now. Okay. And then in that belly band pocket, I wanted to put a booklet. So I just grabbed a piece of paper that is 10 by seven. And score it at five. So it makes a five by seven booklet. And then that guy's gonna go right in here. There we go. All right. So now we have the basis of our book done. I'm going to fix my little boo-boo and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the closure. All right. I'll be back in a minute. So then I uh, wanted to show you really quick on that diagonal pocket page that we talked about. Um, I didn't talk about how to cut the papers so that when you put your pattern paper on it, um, you can you can cover it and, and how what the dimensions were and stuff. So um, let me go ahead and go through that with you really quick. I got some different colored paper so that I can kind of demonstrate it. So this blue piece here is the back of that page that we're gonna put the diagonal pocket on. And then this black piece of paper is the paper that we cut. Okay, so we cut it 11 and a half um, by seven and a half tall. And then we did our score. And then we did, uh, we did the cut. Okay, so let me backtrack and go through this step by step. So cut your paper seven and a half by 11 and a half. All right, the first thing you're gonna do is do a half an inch score. And then you're going to fold that and burnish it. And then from that top point 
all the way down to the bottom point, you're going to cut that off. And then you're gonna put this back in your scoreboard and you're going to, and I did it um, like this, and line it up with this folded, and you should have, it should be 11 inches, and you're gonna wanna score this at five and a half. And then when you turn that over and fold it and burnish it, then that's gonna make your page. So this is going to adhere completely to this page, okay? So real quick, I'll demonstrate that, and then I'll show you how to cut the papers. Let me get my glue here. So I glued this edge on first. And I know I already showed this in the video, but I wanted to show it again because I wanted to show about the paper, the pattern paper and how to cover it and make it pretty. Okay, so you glue that on there first. Make sure that's nice and lined up. Okay, and then I glued down at the bottom here and on the side, and then that goes to the quarter inch mark. Remember, we have our page where we've got a little extra quarter inch um, between the page elements and our binding. Okay, so that's what that black line represents. Okay, and then, where is my tissue? Why am I always losing my tissues? Okay. Get another one. All right. And then the last thing we're going to do is glue this bottom corner down. Okay. And that will create the diagonal, the double diagonal pocket on this page. Okay. So you have a pocket here and then you'll have a pocket here. Now, to cut the papers. So what I ended up doing was... I cut a piece of paper, and I'll put it together so you can see it as it was whole. So I cut a piece of my pattern paper, and I used one sheet, and I cut it at seven and a quarter tall by five and a quarter wide. And then I measured from the top corner up here, I measured down three and five eighths inch and made a mark. And then from that corner to this corner, that's where I cut it. Okay, so that's our first piece. And then all I did was measure from that point again to the bottom corner and cut that piece off. Okay, so real quick, we'll do that again. Um, cut your paper, so if it's this is in its entirety, in its whole, it's seven and a quarter tall by five and a quarter wide. And then on the left side, you're gonna measure down to three and five eighths inch, and you're gonna make a little tick mark. And then from that tick mark, you're going to cut the diagonal from that mark to the top corner. And that's your first triangle to cover that pocket. And then you're gonna take from that tick mark all the way down, and you're gonna take that part off. And that's gonna cover it. And I just realized I cut the blue paper too long, so let me fix that super quick. I don't want any confusion. Okay, so this is what our pocket should look like on the page, okay? Because it goes all the way to the top of the page. So then when you have your pieces cut, then when you lay this down, you will have a nice little border of your cardstock all the way around and your page, if you have some really cute elements on the page, it will stay completely intact so you'll see it, okay? So then your pages will look like that when you glue those down. I hope that makes sense. But then you'll have a pretty covered set of double pockets and you'll have a pocket here that goes all the way to the bottom and then you'll have a nice little pocket here for smaller embellishments. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you. All right, we'll be back. Okay, so um, basically I'm just back real quick. Um, I went ahead and did my closure for the book. Now what I decided to do, and I didn't put the title on here yet, but the title of the book is going to go here. So I just adhered some seam binding underneath that, and we're just doing a simple seam binding closure for this album. Um, I put a sticker on the spine here that came with the paper collection. I thought it was really cute. And then on the back, just um, simple, um, I put down the seam binding underneath the pattern paper 
and glued it down really good. So that is the closure of the book. Um, I was thinking I was going to do something a little more elaborate, but I changed my mind. <laughs> so, you know, that's what artists get to do, right? So anyway, um, that is the basis of the book. And I hope you enjoyed these tutorials. And um, I'd love to see what you make with yours. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you like my first design team project with Country Craft Creations. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.